House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says they are setting up an independent body to investigate the January 6th Capitol riot. This comes as she's facing questions about her actions before, during, and after the Capitol breach. And Minneapolis is set to spend millions of dollars to recruit more police officers. This comes after the unrest last summer saw an unprecedented number of police officers resign or go on leave. And Utah's governor signs a new bill loosening his state's concealed carry gun laws. The law also increases funding for suicide prevention efforts. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. There's a new date that will live in infamy January 6th. Just like 9-11, now House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Congress will establish a commission to look into the Capitol breach. She said on Monday, we must get to the truth of how this happened to protect our security, our security, our security. Our next step will be to establish an outside independent 9-11 type commission to investigate and report on the facts and causes of the riot. Democrat Senator Chris Coons agrees. On Sunday, he said there's still more evidence that the American people need and deserve to hear. And a 9-11 commission is a way to make sure that we secure the Capitol going forward. It comes after General Russell Honore suggested in his review that a full commission is needed. Republicans have also endorsed the idea of an independent investigation. Pelosi said the House will boost security at the Capitol to make sure the building and members are safe. But not all lawmakers agree about what happened that day. Republican Senator Ron Johnson told radio show 1130 WISN that although he condemns the violence, he takes issue with Democrats calling it an armed insurrection. He said, when you hear the word armed, don't you think of firearms? Here's the questions I would have liked to ask. How many firearms were confiscated? How many shots were fired? I'm only aware of one and I'll defend that law enforcement officer for taking that shot. He blamed groups of agitators for the violence, not the tens of thousands of Trump supporters who were there. And Republican Mike Johnson agrees. He told Breitbart News Sunday that Democrats used the impeachment to make Trump supporters look like criminals. He said they wanted to equate all those tens of millions of Trump's voters and all of his supporters and everybody who came to the rally. They wanted to equate all of those people with a couple hundred criminals who came in and ransacked the Capitol. He says impeachment is now a political weapon for the majority party to use against presidents they don't like. Trump's lawyers argued an insurrection, unlike a riot, is an organized movement acting for the express purpose to overthrow and take possession of a government's powers. Adding that the former president's speech was not an act encouraging an organized movement to overthrow the United States government. The Senate acquitted Trump over the weekend. At 57 to 43 to convict Trump, it was 10 votes shy of the 67 needed for conviction. The vote cleared Trump of the charge of incitement of insurrection, a charge that his lawyers denounced as a monstrous lie that didn't reflect the reality of what happened on January 6th. Now Pelosi is facing questions about her actions before, during, and after the Capitol breach. As Speaker of the House, Pelosi has a decisive role in ensuring the safety and security of everyone visiting the Capitol complex. Four Republicans are asking her why the request for National Guard support was denied, about her conversations with her staff and officers on the subject, and why her team isn't complying with requests to turn over materials linked to the January 6th event. The letter says reports were confirmed by multiple sources. The Capitol Hill Police Chief requested the National Guard be activated ahead of the January 6th joint session of Congress. But the response from the surgeon at arms acting on Pelosi's behalf didn't support the move because the optics of having them on site wasn't good. The Republican representatives also claim on the actual day it took over an hour for the National Guard to be authorized. They are asking why Capitol Police Chief Sun's request for National Guard support on January 4th was denied. If Sergeant at Arms Paul Irving got permission from Pelosi staff on January 4th before denying Sun's request for the National Guard, 
What conversation or guidance was given to the sergeant at arms about security leading up to January 6th? What the response was when Sun requested National Guard support? And lastly, why House officers are refusing to comply with requests to turn over materials relevant to the events surrounding the 6th? The events at the Capitol ended in the death of five people, including Capitol Hill Police Officer Brian Sicknick. Now, House Republicans are questioning why the National Guard needs to be deployed at the Capitol until possibly this fall. A Michigan Congresswoman, Lisa McLean, and other House Republicans are asking Speaker Pelosi to explain the reasoning. McLean told Fox News that the only briefings she and her colleagues have had on this issue were through the media, saying the troops may be here to stay until the fall. McLean said she asked Pelosi for a briefing as to why they need the troops here for so long, but she says they've received zero information. The National Guard presence comes with a hefty price tag. Just to keep them there through mid-March will cost taxpayers around half a billion dollars. McLean said it's amazing to me that she can do this without any disclosure, without any information, and just continue to spend money with no briefing. It doesn't make sense to me. Officials deployed tens of thousands of troops to Washington to assist with security following the Capitol breach. McLean sits on the House Armed Services Committee. She wants to know why the troops are staying so long, saying, just tell me why. I feel like there's a boogeyman under my bed. About 5,000 troops are expected to remain until March 15th, but apparently Pelosi has extended their deployment. This isn't the first time. In late January, 42 House Republicans sent a letter to Pelosi urging her to remove the barricades surrounding the Capitol. The primary signatory of the letter, Representative Ted Budd, said there are fears this will become permanent military-style fencing. Speaking of security, the Minneapolis Police Department is short-staffed following last summer's unrest. Now their city council wants to spend $6.4 million to recruit new officers. The death of George Floyd last summer sparked riots and led to the burning of a police precinct. Activists called for the police department to be dismantled. Officers left the force in record numbers. Now Minneapolis doesn't have enough cops. Some residents complain about an increase in violent crime and longer police response times. They are pushing to get more officers hired. The city council voted unanimously Friday to approve the additional funding that police requested. The department says it only has 638 officers available to work. That's roughly 200 fewer than usual. After Floyd's death and the unrest that followed, an unprecedented number of officers quit or went on extended medical leave. Over in Utah, Republican Governor Spencer Cox signed a new bill loosening his state's concealed carry gun laws. Utah's new gun law allows gun owners to carry a concealed firearm in public without a permit. It applies to lawful gun owners over the age of 21. Seventeen other states have similar laws. The bill also creates the Suicide and Education Prevention Fund. The executive director of the National Rifle Association's lobbying arm praised the bill. He thanked lawmakers for protecting Second Amendment rights. He wrote, there is no reason a law-abiding person should have to ask for permission to carry a firearm for self-defense. The passage of this bill demonstrates Utah's commitment to protecting the Second Amendment rights of its citizens. But it's not all praise. The organization Moms Demand Action opposed the bill, saying permitless carry legislation strips states of essential permitting and training standards for carrying concealed guns in public. Training is one of the cornerstones of responsible gun ownership, and removing that element is risky. The Utah Gun Violence Center states the law will lead police to assume people are carrying a gun. They claim this will be dangerous for people of color interacting with police. This comes as Biden is urging Congress to crack down on gun control. He's calling for stricter oversight for gun owners and manufacturers on the third anniversary of the Parkland, Florida mass shooting. He's asking Congress to start working on laws to take away immunity for gun manufacturers. Immunity is what protects gun manufacturers from being sued for any violence that may happen with their product. If this immunity is stripped away, the manufacturers themselves are at risk of being stripped away too.
Biden also wants Congress to pass a law banning assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. This is an attempt to prevent violent crime. But cities that have implemented stricter gun control laws are cities that continue to see high crime rates, like New York, Chicago and Los Angeles. Another law Biden is advocating for would require background checks on all gun buyers. Some say it could be a step toward a government-held list of gun owners. In places like 1930s Germany, those were used to confiscate civilians' weapons and impose a total ban on guns. Congress has some legislation that goes even further than Biden's proposals. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas wrote legislation that would require gun owners to pay at least $800 a month for an insurance policy. The legislation also requires people to go through a government psychological evaluation before getting permission to buy one. Gun control advocacy groups are now pushing changes to laws that they believe will help minimize gunfire deaths. Even though Democrats control both the House and Senate, some Republican senators would need to support these efforts to pass new gun laws. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.